Hey everyone, this is the Millionaire Hippies Podcast with your host, Boom Shika, where we chat about spirituality, business, and health. We all want to live self-actualizing, fulfilling lives with joy, prosperity, and gratitude. Let's go on this beautiful journey together. Hey everyone, welcome to another podcast episode. My name is Boom Shika, and this is the Millionaire Hippie Podcast. And in today's podcast, I wanted to speak to you guys about the fact that I had a couple of tumultuous days the last couple of days. I just wanted to share with you how not everything is ever, ever going to work out the way you want it to or you plan it to, but it always works out the way it's supposed to. And so whatever is happening is meant to happen, even though it wasn't in your plan necessarily. So recently I had to go out of Chiang Mai, out of Thailand to Laos to do my visa run. Basically what happens in Thailand is that they allow us to stay for three months stints at a time. But after every three months stint, we have to go outside the country and get our next visa uh, approval or extension outside the country. You can't get it inside the country. So you go outside the country and you come back in and you get two months on your passport and then you have you can go to an immigration office and extend it by another 30 days and after those 30 days you have 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 to leave the country in order to get another extension for two months and then you repeat the process over and over again so you can stay in Thailand for three months at a time so I am actually getting the education visa done so I can study Thai at the same time as I'm living in the country which is awesome I'm so grateful that they let us do that and so I can actually stay in the country for three months of stints, more than three months stints, but I have to go to the immigration office every three months to let them know that I am still in the country and still studying Thai. But in order to get that education visa, I had to leave the country and get the stamp in and all that, right? So I went to Laos because that's typically where most people go because it's cheap and it's close by and I assumed that it would be all right. Um, uh, we didn't hear the story. So what happened was that I went over, the visa went really, really well. I got the visa so easily. I was so worried about it for some reason because everyone had been telling me, oh, you know, this and that. They're changing the rules and you don't know what's going to happen. So I got the visa. I got the stamp. Awesome. I'm so happy. I just have to go back home. I have to get back to Chiang Mai. And so I'm in the bus. I'm, I'm taking a bus to the airport, the Thailand Udon Thani Airport, which is at the border of, of Laos and Thai, Thailand. And so I'm at the check-in counter, and I check in, and he says, it's gate number two on the second floor. And I say, all right, cool, gate number two, I'm going to get, go get there right now. Even though our, I'm two hours early, I'm going to get there, and I'm going to sit there, I'm going to watch the gate, and I'm going to go back home today because I don't want any more delays. I need to get back home to do work. So in my head, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to go sit, watch the gate, check in, uh, I mean, get into the plane, get back home. I had a long list of things I had to do the night that I got into Chiang Mai and then a long list of things to do today and day after, which is basically where I am right now. It's actually Saturday right here, August 5th. And so I'm sitting at the gate and there's a bunch of children around me, really cute Thai babies. Oh my God, they're the cutest little things on this planet and they're roaming around, they're yelling and they're having fun. I'm watching them and just having so much fun watching little kids play. Um, and they're, you know, just adorable. So I'm, I guess, a little distracted, but I'm keeping my ears open for any announcements. Didn't realize that one of the announcement ladies, or the one, one of the announcement speakers, is really low in volume, and so most people can't hear what the hell's going on. And so that was the announcement speaker that the lady that was announcing my gate, my flight, used, and obviously I did not see, I guess, that they were boarding, I did not notice that they were gone, and I'm waiting, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, they must be delayed. Stupidly, because I never, I've never had an issue with any flights here in Thailand, so I'm believing, and I'm thinking, oh, everything's gonna be all right, they're just delayed. An hour later, after my flight's supposed to leave, I'm like, oh, you know what, I should, I should go check. And that was the last flight of the day. There were no more flights going out. There were no more flights going out at Udantani. It's a very tiny airport. It's 7 p.m. And I'm stuck in Udantani until tomorrow, which is when the next flight goes. Not only that, but I've lost the money for the flight that I paid and all that. So obviously, it's a big waste all around. And I'm really upset with myself. Because obviously, in my head, it's all my fault. 
I was the one who got distracted by these kids. I was the one who wasn't paying attention. I was the one who didn't ask earlier. I should have asked right away. Blah, blah, blah. All these shoulds started stamping their heads around my head. And I was really upset because not only was I wasting money, but more importantly, I was wasting time. Because if I stayed overnight, then I wouldn't be able to really do a lot of work and blah, blah, blah. So I had a pity party for myself for maybe, I would say, 10, 20 seconds, right? And then I decided, okay, this is useless. I cannot do this anymore. I have to go get to a bus station. Perhaps there's a bus I can catch, so I don't have to wait. I don't have to stay at a hotel tonight. I can just take a bus overnight and then be in Chiang Mai tomorrow morning. And so I go to the police booth, and they're like, oh, you need to get to Chiang Mai. And they're like, what happened to your flight? <laughs> and they're all so nice. I mean, they're such nice people. And they're like, what happened to your flight? And I'm like, uh, I missed it. <laughs> And they all laugh, not in a malicious way. They just laugh because they know what's probably going on in my head. And they just sympathize with me. They empathize with me. And I just felt so relieved all of a sudden. I felt not so alone in the world all of a sudden. Because I knew there were these nice, kind people who were there to help me. And so they started roaming around, looking for a taxi driver for me, telling me how much it's going to cost. They're like, don't worry, there's a bus to Chiang Mai. Don't worry about it. You'll get the bus. Nothing to worry about. They kept on consoling me. I guess I looked like I needed it. <laughs> such good people. I'm so thankful for the kindness of this world and of Thai people. They're such good, kind-hearted people. I'm so grateful to be around them. Anyway, so I get to the bus station and obviously there is a bus because Thankfully, the universe loves me, and I get the bus ticket, not that expensive either, which is great. And I stand there waiting for the bus to arrive. And again, it's 8.15 p.m. My bus is supposed to be at 8.30, and I'm looking around, and I see two buses. And I'm to myself, okay, she would have told me if that, if that was my bus. And I and remembered in my head, okay, I'm making an assumption again. I'm making an assumption that they're going to tell me and they're going to be loud about it that, and I'm going to understand the language that they're speaking. Wrong on all counts because that was my bus and they were waiting for me. So thankfully, oh my God, it was also a really long day. So I was really tired by this point. So forgive me for not being so attentive. I caught the bus, I sat down on the bus and that is when I sighed a breath of relief because I was so... So exhausted. It was such a long day and I was so exhausted from the week because of the tension of the visa. But I finally was on the bus and I knew that 12 hours later, I would be in Chiang Mai. And I, I would be home, I would be in my apartment, I'd be able to relax and chill and do whatever I wanted to do. Right? So long story short, basically, the, the way I planned out my day, I already had things I had to do the same day that I was going back home. And, you know... Obviously, it did not work out that way. Not only did I not get back home the same night, I got back home the next morning exhausted that I needed to take a break, a little bit of a break where I had to sleep for a bit the entire morning basically until noon before I could even start a, a single thing of work. So what was the lesson here? And I was always, I'm always the kind of person who is thinking to myself, what is the lesson here? What's the lesson? What's the universe trying to tell me? What's the universe trying to tell me? Perhaps the universe is trying to tell me not to plan so much, and also to slow down. I think those are the two things that I take away from this, that a lot of times we don't know how things are going to work out because of the fact that everything is so random and, and life is a little bit crazy. But not only because of that, but the fact that we, we don't know, we are such minuscule creatures that we only see maybe a tiny fraction of what is the entirety of this universe. We only see a tiny fraction of the the visible universe, we don't see what's going on in the invisible universe, we don't see the energy patterns, we don't see anything really. We don't see the parallel universes, we're not able to see time all at once how it is rather than seeing it as a linear thing. So there's so many things that we are not privy to. How can we know why certain things happen the way they happen? And so I'm thinking to myself, you know, why, does, why did this happen this way? Why, why, why? How can I know? How can I ever know what was the reason for it? In hindsight, perhaps, I'll look back on it maybe five months later and realize, oh, that's the reason why it happened. Okay, that makes sense. But right now, in this moment when I'm looking at it, or right now, very close to it and very fresh in my mind, I have no idea why this happened the way it happened. And I, don't, I don't think I need to know. As my friend was saying, Roman was saying, that if it's happening, it means that it's ha meant to happen. And that means that it's necessary that it should happen. So... Don't question it because it's meant to happen. So what's the point of questioning it? It's happening and it's going to happen no matter uh, without us questioning or not questioning, right? 
And the second thing I, I realized, obviously, was what, what I said was that, first of all, because we don't know all the things that are happening, so there's no point questioning what's going to happen. But planning too much also is not a good thing. And I think we all do this. We are over planners. Uh, I specifically am really guilty of this fact. Like my day is planned out to a T. I have a billion tasks on my to-do list and I'm doing them every single day and I'm I'm working on them and I feel like I'm accomplishing something, obviously. But a lot of times I'm not, perhaps. And so what is the point of all this? The point of all the work that I'm doing is because I like doing it. But when I stop liking it or I'm doing it just because it's on my to-do list and I'm not thinking about it consciously anymore, or I'm just doing it because I want to be doing something rather than just sitting and staring off into space or thinking about my plan, I'm just putting all these things on my to-do list for no apparent reason, then that becomes a problem, right? And yesterday what I was doing was I was overpacking my day. I was tired already at the airport and I was already telling myself I'll do this, this, this when I get back home. The universe was telling me, no, you're not going to do anything because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make you miss your flight or you're going to miss your flight on your own and you're going to realize that you can't plan your days like this because you don't know what's going to happen. Of course, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do any planning at all. Of course not. Like that we do the planning that's necessary. But we have to realize in the background that all of these plans might be smashed to the ground and not take place. And so what are we going to do? What are what is what is our contingency plan? Contingency plan to be alive and be all right with what's going on. And that's the basic thing of it. No matter what is happening, it's meant to happen. And so no matter what is happening, we need to be all right with what's happening. Even yesterday, that little bout of crying for myself and being pit pitiful on myself and all that stuff was a waste of time and energy because there's no point to it. It had already happened and me crying about it wasn't doing anything useful. I should have gone right away and gone to the bus station and gotten a bus. But instead, I spent a few minutes crying and doing all that, right? Again, a waste of my time. Because whatever is happening is happening for a reason, is meant to happen. And so if it's happening, let's accept it as being, as the truth, as being the present moment. And let's just go along with the flow. Let's go, go along with the flow. The universe wanted me to take the bus yesterday. I don't know what the reason for it is. Perhaps I wasn't meant to take the Uber that I would have taken back home or the Songtao or perhaps uh, there was some flooding or who knows what, right? Like, I don't know what happened or why I, I wasn't meant to take that flight. Other people were, but I specifically was not because even when they announced my name, I didn't hear it because she was so quiet about it and I wasn't supposed to hear it, right? And so that was not that was meant to happen. I was meant to miss my flight and I was meant to take the bus yesterday. I don't know why yet, but I do know that I've gotten a bunch of fodder for all the blog posts and things I'm going to write today and all the videos I'm going to do because there's so much in my head right now that I need to talk about. All that stuff that happened inside of me internally yesterday, berating myself, calling myself name, doing all that stuff to me. I wanted to talk about all this stuff because it's important. I started hating myself in that moment. I started saying that I was, a, I was an idiot and I'm stupid and I don't know what I'm doing. And if I can't take a flight, then how can I run a business and all that stuff. All those things, all those mean things that we say to ourselves, right? And I said those mean things to myself and I caught myself saying those mean things. And I'm thinking to myself, really, is it that important? Don't people miss flights all the time? And aren't you allowed to miss one flight considering you take a billion of them every single month? I mean, every single year. So why are you being so harsh on yourself? If it's meant to happen, then why are you being so hard on yourself? It was meant to happen. You were right there. It wasn't like you were partying out late and you were drunk and all that stuff. You were coherent. You were sitting there. You were waiting for it. Nothing happened to catch your attention and you missed your flight. It was not entirely your fault, but it happened because it was meant to happen. So stop berating yourself. And so I did that to myself and I wanted to really be careful from now on that if something is happening that is not in my plan, it does not mean anything. My plan actually, first of all, means nothing. It's just a bunch of crap because I've built it. And any plan that a human being based on their limited insight builds is useless. It's not a plan that's built on, on the universe's plan for me, right? I don't know what the universe's plan for me is, so I haven't built a plan based on that. But if I knew, I would build a plan based on that because the universe knows everything, right? I am just privy to a little bit of knowledge and that also is false knowledge most of the time because I'm basing it on all this false information that I have knowledge about, right? 
And so the next time around, and this is the lesson I'm going to take away from it, is that the next time around something like this happens, something that is not in my plan, and that's a big thing that I have to be careful about, something that's not in my plan, I want to be careful that just because it's not in my plan doesn't mean that it's not meant to happen, right? And so I really want to be careful about the next time around. And I hope that you guys can take a lesson from me and say, okay, just because it's not in my plan doesn't mean that it's not meant to happen. Right? So don't fight against what's actually happening. Don't fight against reality because that is just the definition of insanity. How about we don't fight against it, we try to understand what's going on and then go along with the flow of the universe. The universe obviously meant for this to happen and I just had to go along with the flow. And thankfully I had enough cash in my pocket that I could pay for the ticket and get around to the bus station and get back home. And I'm home right now and that's all that matters because my health and my mental sanity is still intact, which is really, really important, right? That's the most important thing here. So I hope this makes sense to you guys. It's such an interesting topic to talk about. And all of the stuff that I'm kind of building these podcasts on, it's all based on real life experiences. I hope that you get that. Because I really want to share with you what's going on with me so that you perhaps in the future can use this lesson and use it in your own life. Perhaps next time you miss a flight, hopefully it never happens to you, but if you do, then you can actually remember a word saying, you know, it's in the plan, it's in the plan, don't worry about it, it's totally fine. Again, thank you for listening, and I hope that you guys have an amazing day wherever you are. By the way, check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash boomshaka. I'll talk to you guys next time around, and bye for now. Thanks for listening. Go check out my website at themillionairehippie.com if you want more free, awesome content. If you really like the podcast, please consider giving me a five-star review on iTunes. Until next time, namaste.